So in the last video, we talked a bit about variables and data types. And in this video, we're going to talk a bit about predefined variables or what you also call built in variables. Now, a predefined variable is a variable that exists inside the PHP language. So in comparison to a variable from the last episode, where we created it ourselves by saying we have a variable by saying a dollar sign, and then we give it some kind of name. So we could, for example, say name, set it equal to some kind of value like Daniel. And then we have a variable, but now this is a user defined variable, which means that we created it ourselves, but we do also have variables inside the PHP language. And these are called super globals, which means that we can access these variables from anywhere inside our code, no matter what the scope is inside our code. Now scope is something we haven't talked about yet, but it is something we'll get a little bit more into once we start talking about functions in PHP. So for now, just know that super globals can be accessed from anywhere inside our code. Now we do have a list of super globals that we can gain access to. And each of these do something different when it comes to grabbing these variables. So I'm just going to go ahead and list them out here one by one and talk a bit about them and explain what exactly they do and what you can use them for inside your code. And just keep in mind, once we do this, I don't expect you to memorize all of these in the first go, we will actually get to use more of them as we start, you know, continuing these lessons here. So you will get more practical examples to just kind of help you understand how we use these. But for now, I'm just going to give a short description of what exactly they do. And then we'll talk about more of them in the future episodes. Now, the first thing you need to know is that whenever we want to define a super global or a predefined variable is that we reference them by creating the dollar sign, but then we create a underscore followed by a capitalized word. So for example, we could access the server variable and you want to make sure you add these square brackets afterwards and then semicolon. So we could, for example, go inside and say we want to get the document underscore root, which is going to give us information about the root path of this particular website here. So in order to access it inside the browser, we do of course need to output it by echoing it out. So if we were to go inside my website, refresh it, you can now see that we get the C drive exam HT docs, which funny enough is the folder that we talked about in the first episode where we installed XAMPP. So this is the location of the website inside our computer. So what I could also do is I can go underneath here and just sort of copy paste this. And I could also get some information about the PHP underscore self, then go inside the browser, refresh it. And then we can see we get some more information here. So now we get the my website, which is name of the root folder that we're inside of right now. And we also get the name of the file that we're inside of right now. And the reason these are written right next to each other is of course, because we have them echoed right after each other. We could also go down below here and say we want to echo out a HTML break, which is if you know HTML, which you should know by now is how to create a new line. So if we were to save this, go inside, you can now see that these are the two different pieces of information that we get using the server super global. And there's many pieces of information you can get about the server. And there's a huge list that I will include inside the documentation inside the description of this video here. But for now, we're just going to take a couple of examples here just to kind of show you a little bit about what it can do. Uh, the next one I want to show you is going to be the server name. So if we were to go down and copy paste the break, I can also go in here and grab the server underscore name. If we were to do that, you can now see that we get local host. And that is of course, because we're working on a local server right now. So if you had your website on a online server, that would be the name of that server. We can also copy paste one more time and we can do one called request method underscore method. And what this will do is tell you how this page was accessed. So in this case here, you could, for example, say that this is using a get method. But if you were to access a page using another method, like a post method, then you can also see that when you output what kind of request method you were using. Now, if you come from the HTML and CSS course that I have on my channel, you may have heard something about get and post methods. And that is essentially when you have a form inside a website, you know, just a regular form you can fill in using HTML. And inside the form, we have two attributes. We have a action and we have a method. And inside the method, you just simply state if you want to submit the data using a get or a post method. And that is essentially the information we're getting here. In a couple of episodes from now, we will do a exercise together where we will be using this particular method in order to graph some data. So in a couple of episodes from now, do take note that we have a dollar sign underscore server request method since we will be using that particular one 
in a future episode. Now, the next one we're going to talk about is going to be dollar sign underscore get, which is another super global that you may have some bells ringing in your head about because we just talked about get and post methods. So essentially, when it comes to handling data and submitting data from page to page inside our website, we can do so using a get or post method, like I said, using a HTML form. So when we do that, we can use a get or post method in order to grab that data from inside the URL, which means that I can go in and instead of all this stuff that we just wrote here, I could go in and say that we want to grab a piece of data. So dollar sign underscore get square brackets, semicolon. And I want to grab a piece of data that might have a label labeled as name. Now, currently we don't actually have anything like this inside our website, but what you could do is you can go inside your website, go inside the URL and say that you have our current page, which is index.php. And then you can add a question mark name equal to Danny. And because we have this name equal to Danny inside our URL after the question mark, we're now accessing a piece of data inside the URL, which could have been submitted by a get method. So this is how it would actually look like if you were to submit a piece of data from a form using HTML. So if we were to go inside my code and actually echo this out, because like we talked about, we do need to echo in order to output something inside the browser. If I were to do this, because I have this inside the URL and refresh it, you can now see we get Danny. And that is because right now all the data inside the URL is going to be accessed as an associative array, which means that we have a bunch of data with labels that we can access using this get method here. So if I were to go in here, so what I could also do is I could add a ampersand symbol, which is the and symbol. And I could add in a second piece of data, which in this case could be I color is equal to blue. So if we were to add in a second piece of data, we could also go in and say we want to echo out a piece of data, which is called I color. So if we wrote I color, saved it, refreshed it, you can now see we get Danny blue. Using get methods is something we use quite often inside PHP since we do submit data from page to page constantly whenever we do something using PHP. So knowing this is something that is very important for you to memorize. However, we do also have a post method and that is going to work a little bit different because a post method will also submit data, but a post method is not going to be visible inside the URL just like a get method is. So essentially I could still have the same information submitted, but we can't see it inside the URL. So even though we might still have data accessible to us that we submitted to this page, we can't see it inside the browser, which is very useful when it comes to submitting more sensitive data. So in case someone is standing behind you and looking over your shoulder as you're submitting data inside a website, they can't see it. So it's gonna be more secretive when you submit it. This of course, many different benefits to using a post method over a get method. It really depends on what kind of usage you're trying to get here. The main rule of thumb is that if you're trying to get data from a database or just get data that you want to show the user, then we use a get method. And if you want to submit data to the website or to a database inside the website, then we use a post method. A very good example of this is if you have a login system and you want to lock in the user when they're typing in that login information and they submit the data, then we don't want that data to be seen. So that has to be submitted using a post method. But once they log in and they have this user profile page inside their website that they can visit, then all the data inside the profile page could, for example, be grabbed using a get method. So again, a couple of different ways to use these. But now we do also have something called a request method. So if we were to go down here and instead say request and do this and actually go back inside the URL and refresh it, you can now see that we're still getting Danny. So even though I used a request method instead that still looks for the name label inside the URL, we actually still get Danny. And this is because a request method is going to be looking for get post and cookies when it comes to looking for data inside this website here. The thing about using requests though is that even though it is kind of like this super, super global where we can get both get methods and post methods and cookies and we just use one thing to get all three of these is that you don't really know what you're grabbing whenever the user submits something. So if I were to, for example, submit a form, but also were to go inside and say that I want to just manually add some data inside the URL, then if you don't set it up properly and validate it properly and sanitize everything once they submit the data, then it can kind of go in and do some security damage. So the rule of thumb here is whenever you know that you're just gonna be handling post or get data, just go ahead and use the get a post method instead. So just kind of forget about this one for now. 
now. Just remember that we have a get and a post method and, and just don't look at this one for now. The next one I want to talk about is going to be the files super global. So we have one called files. Now this one is going to be used whenever you want to get data about a file that has been uploaded to your server. So in case where you have a HTML form, again, we're talking about forms here. Inside HTML forms, we can allow users to submit files when they actually want to submit their form. So for example, a picture or a PDF document or something they want to upload to the website, then they can do that using a HTML form. And whenever a user does that, we need to double check all sorts of things about the file once they actually upload the file to make sure that this file should be uploaded to our website. Because let's say, for example, a user decides to crash our website by uploading a file that may be very, very, very large in file size, then we want to have something to double check the file size of that file that the user submitted. And we can do that using our super global call file since we get all sorts of information about the files that the user submitted, for example, the file size. We can also get information about the name of the file, uh, what kind of extension it has. Is it a PDF file or is it a file format that we should not allow to be uploaded inside our website? So using this super global here, just kind of like allow for us to grab information about files that the user submitted using a HTML form. The next one I want to talk about is going to be one called dollar sign underscore cookie. Now a cookie is essentially a small file that your server embeds on the user's computer, which means that we have a bunch of information we can store on the user's computer. And using this super global here, we can actually store or grab information about cookies inside our website. And in the same sense, we do also have one for a session. So I can also grab a session variable. So in this case, if we could, for example, grab some information about, um, let me actually go and demonstrate this one. So if we were to go inside some PHP tags, I could, for example, create a dollar sign underscore session. And inside the brackets, I'm gonna make sure to include a name for this session variable here. So I could call this one username. And if I were to go inside and store this username inside the browser using a session, this could, for example, be a username called crossing. Then I can access it by simply reference to this particular session variable that I just created called username. Then if I were to go inside the browser and refresh it, even though we don't have a session running, we can actually gain access to this one because it's inside the same page. So right now I can see that we have this crossing stored inside a session variable. So we can store information about the user inside this session, which is on the server side. This means that if I were to close down the browser and actually close down the session we are running inside the website, it is going to forget about the session variable unless I set it again inside the website, which I do actually do right here because it's not the same page. And again, we will get to talk much more about session variables and cookies in a future episode. For now, just know that we have these super global session and cookie variables that we can use in order to grab data from inside a session or inside a cookie. And the last one we have that I just want to mention here, which we should definitely not get into right now because this is heavy stuff for a beginner, uh, but we do also have something called a ENV, which is a environment variable that we can gain access to inside our PHP code. Environment variables are essentially very sensitive data that you want to have inside the particular environment that the user is working in. So, you know, data that should not be accessible to either the user or other environments. Um, but this is not something we're gonna talk about right now. This is something we'll have for a later episode. And just so you have all of them right in front of you so you can see how they all look like, these are all the super globals that we have inside PHP. Again, it's very important for you to know that I don't expect you to memorize all of these, especially since we haven't actually used these in any sort of practical examples inside our code so far. But the reason I wanted to discuss super globals is because right now we will get to talk a bit about a couple of these in the upcoming lessons. So instead of telling you that, oh, by the way, we have something called super globals and we're just gonna use two of them right now. I thought it was a really good idea just to introduce you to all the super globals that we have so you know that they exist and what they do. So in a future episode, whenever we visit some sort of lesson that is related to, for example, sessions inside our tutorial, then you know that there's something called a session super global because we talked about it. So it is important that you know that these exist but I don't expect you to memorize any of these just quite yet. In the next episode, we're gonna talk a bit about operators inside PHP, which is something that isn't quite complicated. It's, it, it's pretty simple, but it is the last lesson that we need in order to do a practical little exercise together where we build a calculator together, since this is kind of like a tradition on my channel that we build a calculator using whatever programming language we're using right now. And when we do get to that episode, we will talk about the server and the get super global, since we have to use those in order to do our calculator exercise, which which is why I wanted to talk about these right now since we have to use them. So why not introduce them to you at this early on? 
And before we end off the episode here, I just want to mention that there is another global that we haven't talked about just called global, which is a way for us to gain access to variables that we created from any sort of scope inside our code. And the reason I didn't mention it is because we will get to talk more about scopes once we get to our function episode, which is not far from now. But once we do get to talk about creating functions, we do need to talk about something called the local and the global scope inside our code. And that particular super global is relevant when we come to that particular episode. So I will talk about that once we get to that episode there. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.